Hello, I'm United States Senator Joe Manchin. It is my distinct honor to welcome you to this virtual celebration of Armed Forces Day, paying tribute to the 11th anniversary of Gene Vance Jr. Day. Today and every day we pay tribute to our soldiers serving abroad. We recognize those on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic, and we honor the legacy of all our veterans, both past and present. We must never forget the sacrifices made by the brave men and women who have come before us, the individuals who have served our nation so courageously. I sincerely appreciate our veterans and their family members for the sacrifices they have made to preserve, protect, and defend the freedoms that we hold dear, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This year's special tribute aims to unite our communities as we all work to address the issues our world faces. We have faced many challenges as a nation, but I'm confident our common bonds and dedication to our great nation will continue to keep us safe. I'm proud to join you in showing my appreciation to our first responders, members of the armed forces, and their families. As Americans, one of the most important things we do is honor those responsible for protecting our American values and way of life. By doing so, we ensure our future generations will continue to live in the land of the free and the home of the brave. As always, I greatly appreciate the efforts of Gene Vance Jr. Foundation for the catastrophically injured and all those who helped make this special event possible. It is my hope that today and every day gives you an immense sense of pride in those who have served and continue to serve our nation. May God bless you and may God continue to bless the great state of West Virginia and the United States of America. Hi everyone, today we remember and honor the life and legacy of Staff Sergeant Gene Arden Vance Jr. on what is also U.S. Armed Forces Day. As a member of the West Virginia National Guard, Gene embodied the dedication to service that West Virginians hold in the highest regard. Gene's life, as we know, was tragically cut short, but he died a hero, defending our country and the freedoms that we hold so dear. His legacy lives on not only in the lives he touched, but also in the support that his family provides veterans and their families today in the Gene Vance Jr. Foundation. As we gather together this year for the 11th Gene Vance Jr. Day, please join me in praying for the soldiers and civilians of Ukraine as they fight for their freedom amid Russia's unprovoked and cruel war. Having recently visited Poland and Germany, I saw the impact the war is having on Ukrainians firsthand, and I had the chance to speak to Ukrainians that were forced to leave their homes and their families. The U.S. must continue to provide both humanitarian and military aid and give Ukraine the support it needs to win. My thoughts remain with the active duty military and veterans in our country, as well as the families and loved ones of soldiers who did not make it back home. These men and women have put it all on the line, placed country above self, and sacrificed so much on behalf of our great nation. We will never forget their service. Again, it has been an honor to be a part of Gene Vance Jr. Day again this year. To Gene's family, thank you for your service and tremendous sacrifice. Thank you for the service you continue to give veterans and their families across West Virginia and the lives you have touched in the honor of your beloved Gene. God bless you and God bless America.
I'm Governor Jim Justice. I wish to goodness that I could be with you right now, but, but we'll do it virtually. We've had to do a lot of this and everything, but we're celebrating the 11th Gene Vance Jr. Day. It's great stuff. We're honoring all those that fought our terrible war on terror and continue to do so. We're honoring all those especially that we've lost, that have absolutely, you know, that have so many loved ones that are hurting so bad and continue to hurt. You know, I firmly believe with all in me that we owe all, all to our military, all of our veterans, the active military, and especially those that have given an ultimate, the very ultimate sacrifice. How could we ever, ever, ever think that we can be who we are today if it hadn't have been for these great, brave men and women? So with all that, I tell each and every one of you just this. Be proud. Be proud and be thankful. Be really thankful. You owe every single thing you have to these brave men and women that have stepped up and they met the call. And so with all of that, I'll leave you over and over with just one thing. You owe them. You owe them. Be so proud of them, so appreciative, and reach out a, a kind hand at any time in any way you can. Thank you so much for letting me be with you. Thank you. As we come together today to remember Gene Vance and all the sacrifice that he and his family made for this country, I want us to always remember to try and live our lives the way that Gene did. You know, Gene was always there trying to help wherever he needed to, whether it was in the state of West Virginia or overseas in Afghanistan. So as we take this moment to remember him and remember his sacrifices, please stay and think about the family that's left behind that, that has to deal with this loss. It is absolutely a, a tremendous thing that our soldiers and our airmen do for our, our state and our nation. And today, we are remembering one of those heroes. We're remembering Sergeant Gene Vance. Thank you.
Dennis, Dennis Riggs here from 19 Special Forces Group. I was lucky enough to, be, to uh, ask to be par participate in the 11th Annual Gene Vance Junior Day, also known as the 11th Annual Freedom Tribute. Um, phenomenal opportunity for me to participate in this event. It means a lot to me. One of the biggest reasons why it's so important to me is because Gene was a member of our formation when he made the ultimate sacrifice. So for that reason alone, to have the opportunity to personally remember Gene and also represent 19 Special Forces Group at the same time, it's fantastic, uh, and I really, really appreciate that. So thank you very much to the organization for giving me that opportunity. Also want to take a chance to thank all the parties that helped put this thing together. We're going on 11 years strong with this. We've got to keep it going long into the future. And to keep it going, we've got all the people that are working on this behind the scenes, the people that are supporting it directly, and then you folks out there that are supporting it indirectly. Thank you for that so much. So this year, as we're, as we're talking about remembrance, some things we need to remember and double down on, one is we've got to take a look at what's going on in Ukraine. We've got to provide whatever support we can to them and remember them because what happens there could spread to other places in the world unless we don't pay attention to it. So please keep, keep that in your thoughts and prayers as we move forward. Um, our American soldiers, servicemen, airmen, Marines, and guardians, like, please remember those not just serving, but also past serving. It, it's critical that we remember those and kind of take them into our arms and never forget them. And along those same lines are veterans. Any one of our veterans, those who served, those who have served and sacrificed, those who have served and made the ultimate sacrifice, just like Gene. Please help us remember them. And of course, we can never, ever overlook the families. Those families that have supported, sacrificed, and in some cases, also lost. Please help keep this momentum moving forward for the next event, and please help me remember those things that we talked about today. It's incredibly important for our American way of life, and it's also incredibly important for those living in other places who want to promote their own democracy. Thank you so much. The Press of the Bear. Hello, everyone. This is the 11th year that we recognize the significant contributions and sacrifices that Gene Vance Jr. made on behalf of our nation, our state of West Virginia, and all of us as his friends and fellow citizens. Gene truly epitomized the values that we represent in the United States military, duty, honor, country. Gene was a significant patriot who gave his life in service of our nation and so that others might live and be free. I know that Gene would want us during these trying times to focus on several important things in our current environment. One is to have our thoughts and prayers with all those Americans who we've lost to COVID over the past two plus years. Gene would want all of our fellow veterans and our citizens in general to go out and get vaccinated, to be protected, to protect themselves and thus protect their families and continue to grow our nation on the path it needs to go. In addition, I know that Gene would have a special place in his heart for the people of Ukraine and the terrible sacrifices that they are having to make at this time in our world's history. I wish that everyone would again take a moment, stop and reflect on the significant contributions that Gene Vance Jr. made on behalf of all of us and to look at what we need to do as individuals to take care of each other, to better our nation, to better our state, and protect those around us. God bless you and thank you. Hi, I'm Clay Marsh and I serve as both Chancellor and Executive Dean for Health Sciences at West Virginia University. And also I'm continuing to serve the state of West Virginia as the COVID-19 czar as being appointed by Governor Jim Justice. I want to say thank you uh, on this very special day for the extraordinary work and service of all of our Armed Services members, but particularly the Armed Service members is uh, serving in the West Virginia National Guard. 
Uh, the people in the guard are not only spectacular people, but they are incredible servant leaders. And during this really unusual and unanticipated time of the COVID-19 pandemic, the National Guardsmen have been real heroes, not only in their work to support and protect our country and, and to maintain our safety and, and our freedoms that we enjoy today, but also to serve as, uh, as individuals who have gone in and rolled up their sleeves and helped our hospitals stay open and, and stay functioning, to help administer vaccines, to administer testing, to go wherever they were needed to answer the call for service in the focus of protecting and extending the health and lives of, of West Virginians. So on this very special day, we want you to know how much we appreciate both from the leadership team's perspective, but also for each of our state's residents, uh, how much we appreciate your service, your great work, and know that you have saved many, many lives and you have extended the families and the, and the well-being of so many more. We very much appreciate you. Let's open in prayer for this uh, Jeannie Vance Junior Day. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for all you do for us. And Lord, we do ask your blessing upon this ceremony today. Father, we pray for all those who are serving uh, abroad and, and in our states. And Father, we are so thankful for the freedoms we have, for the sacrifices that many have made over the years that we might maintain those freedoms. And Lord, I just pray that you would just uh, be uh, with their families in a, in a very special way. Lord, we do know that freedom does not come free, that there's a price, and many have paid that ultimate price. Father, we want to remember them today and uplift their families. And Father, just ask for your hand of blessing upon this ceremony. For it's in your precious name I pray. Amen. Hello. My name is Rabbi Irv Els, and I'm the director of the JWB, the Jewish Chaplains Council. On this very important day, a day of remembrance, a day of celebration, and a day of recommitment. We raise our voices in prayer, and we thank God for the blessing of memory. Today, we remember them. When we have achievements that are based on theirs, we remember them for as long as we live. They too will live, for they are now part of us as we remember them. Eloheinu velohei avoteinu, our God and God of our ancestors, on this moment of remembrance, on this moment of celebration, we are grateful for those who have dedicated their lives to the preservation of freedom. Lord, we are painfully aware that as we speak, there are those who are fighting for the very values of democracy and justice and freedom. We ask that you look over those who have dedicated their lives to these principles. And we ask that you continue to bless the memory of those who have paid with their lives and made the ultimate sacrifice. Amen. Hi, my name is Neil Leftwich. I'm, I'm the conference superintendent assigned to the Northern District of the West Virginia Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church. And it is a privilege for me to participate in this event that pays tribute to those who serve, but also to those who made the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms. It is also a privilege for me to remind the families of those who serve, uh, those who are in active duty, and also the families and loved ones who the, of those who made the ultimate sacrifice that you all continue to be covered in prayer each and every day. Never forget that. May you be feeling God's grace and strength and peace today.
Hello everyone, I'm Jenny Celine, Mayor of the City of Morgantown, West Virginia, and I'm grateful for this opportunity to speak to you. Today we honor all the men and women that have served and continue to serve this great nation. Some of these individuals, such as Gene Vance Jr., made the ultimate sacrifice to uphold our freedoms. It is because of the commitment and selflessness of these individuals that we can enjoy the freedoms and safety that come with living in the United States of America. On behalf of the citizens of Morgantown, I would like to thank all our service members and veterans for their service. Your dedication and bravery serve as a source of inspiration and hope for all of us. Please stay safe. Take care. I am very proud to help commemorate Armed Forces Day and the 11th annual Gene Vance Jr. Day, honoring a heroic West Virginia University alumnus who lost his life in Afghanistan nearly 20 years ago. On this day, we traditionally pay tribute to all veterans, military members, and their families who have sacrificed to preserve our freedom. To them, we owe our ability to live and learn, to protest and pray, to think and thrive. And amid the war in Ukraine, we are all reminded that freedom here at home and around the world is precious. It is inspiring to see the incredible resiliency and resolve being shown by Ukrainians. I am also so proud of those in our university and surrounding communities who have answered the rallying call to offer help and support to those in need. May their example, and especially the example of Staff Sergeant Vance, inspire our own acts of courage and compassion. Greetings and deepest thanks on behalf of nearly 190,000 members of the National Society Daughters of the American Revolution. We are all descended from the men and women who achieved American independence, America's first veterans, and I assure you there is a special place in our hearts for each of you today. My name is Denise Doring Van Buren, and I have the privilege of serving as the 45th President General of the National Society of the DAR, but I'm also the first Blue Star mother to do so. I have a son who is in the Army. We're very proud of him, and we also are very much aware of the sacrifices that your families make in order to enable you to be able to do what you do on behalf of the rest of us. So thank you as well to your families for their sacrifice and their courage. May, of course, is Military Appreciation Month, and on the 21st, we will pause for U.S. Armed Forces Day. I assure you that the Daughters of the American Revolution are there with you in spirit, not only during this month and on that specific day, but all year round. God bless you, and God bless these United States of America. of our freedom, things that we take for granted here in the United States come at a very high cost. It comes at the cost of human life. Hello, my name is Doug Gary. I'm a Vietnam era veteran. I come from a military background. I support our men and women in uniform, and I'm also a member of the West Virginia Patriot Guard Riders. My thoughts and prayers are sent to the Ukrainian people and to the Ukrainian military. We should never take freedom for granted. Prayers are sent for our men and women who have already given their lives or those who will give their lives in defense of this action. I'm deeply troubled by Putin and the Russian deplorable actions that they're taking against the Ukrainian people. As America gets ready to celebrate our heroes in Armed Forces Day and Memorial Day, may the rest of the world take a moment to remember the deplorable acts of war and the devastation that results from it. Again, prayers for the Ukrainian people and the Ukrainian military. God bless.
Hey y'all, it's the Davison Brothers here. Thank you guys for including us in the 11th annual Gene Vance Jr. Day. Shine on morning star, shine on. No matter where you are, shine on, shine on. You don't need our tears, we're all just here until we're gone. Shine on, morning star, shine on. Call the way to be it now. You never got okay with shooting dove and dropping bombs. And I can see the hollow in your eyes. Feel it. Dead and still alive. Spite of all the holy hell you had to pay, you dug down in a deeper well, showed us all the way, and we'd be lost without you in the dawn. Shine on, morning star, shine on. Shine on, morning star, shine on. No matter where you are, shine on, shine on. You don't need our tears, we're all just here until we Shine on, morning star, shine on. You settled in on a dead end gravel road. You felt the need to plant some seeds, make a garden grow. You sang and danced the scars out of your heart. Keep us all from falling apart. So shine on, morning star, shine on. No matter where you are, shine on, shine on. You don't need our tears, we're all just here until we. Shine on, morning star, shine on. You don't need our tears, we're all just here until we're gone. Shine on, morning star, shine on. Thank you, guys. I bring you greetings on this special day in which we honor our service men and women in America. And in a world, especially of late, where we have seen so much division, I ask that we remember that before we are flags, parties, beliefs, or anything else, we are part of a brotherhood of men. And within each of these is a divine spark. This is much more important than any human concoction. So the next time the fellow in front of you disagrees, look first for the divine spark that is him. And the more you seek the divine in the other, the more you're going to find it. God bless. I bring you the light as I walk between moments as they pass far and leave. Speak the words and the dream unfolds. Open like a flower, desert rose. 
Life is a prayer Life is a prayer Life is a prayer And every moment sacred Hear your words In the silent nights Shining like the stars In your eyes Life is a prayer Life is a prayer Life is a prayer And every moment sacred And life is a prayer Life is a prayer Life is a prayer And every moment secret Thank you and God bless. Hey everyone, my name is Cody Clayton Eagle and I just wanted to say that I'm so honored to be a part of the American Freedom Tribute this year. And I just want to let the people of Ukraine know that I'm continuously praying for each and every one of you. And also to our troops at home and abroad, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for everything that you do and continuously protecting our freedom every single day because your sacrifice definitely does not go unnoticed. And I just wanted to end this out with saying, this one's on me. So glad you made it back, my friend. You've been a healing back again, halfway around the world. Putting yourself in harm's way And don't think that I'd take for granted The promise of freedom you've defended Without ever asking me for one damn thing So this one's on me And this is for your sweat the blood The tattoos you got in memory of All the ones you've lost in love I thank you's good but it just don't seem hey enough
Hi, my name is Ben Rice from Portland, Oregon, and I am very honored to be part of the Gene Vance Jr. Day and Armed Forces Day celebration. The song I am sharing with you is one that I wrote during the pandemic. It's about how you never know what any of the people around you might be going through, and that it's important to live and give with extra love, joy, and grace. The song is called, Even on a Good Day, You Might Need a Little Bit of Love. Take time to make time That's a lesson told In the blink of an eye The chapter's closed The simple beauty To tell your friends that you care Face down all your troubles together even on a good day You might need to pick me up And even on a good day You need just a little more love Even on a good day When your heart fills with pain Even on a good day Might feel a little bit of rain. You might feel a little bit of rain. Shining imperfections, how a smile spoils. And takes my breath away just like years ago. Two young pups growing old together, stubborn but willing to learn. Even on a good day, you might need to pick me up. And even on a good day, need just a little more love. Even on a good day When your heart feels with pain Even on a good day You might feel a little bit of rain You might feel a little bit of rain Might feel a little bit of rain. Tin can melodies laying on the front porch. The golden hour passes. Bluebirds sing to begin the breeze and the memories. No heart so big just to go it alone. And even on a good day, you might need to pick me up. And even on a good day. Just a little more love Even on a good day When your heart fills with pain Even on a good day You might feel a little bit of rain You might feel a little bit of rain I feel a little bit of rain. You might feel a little bit of rain. You might feel a little bit of rain. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Michael Mintz. I'm the founder of the Jean Vance Jr. Foundation and Jean Vance Jr. Day. Jean Vance Jr. was my close friend and brother-in-law. Tragically, we lost him 20 years ago after the attacks of 9-11 when he left with his Special Forces unit in the hunt for bin Laden in Afghanistan. Jean, like so many others that went after to fight in Afghanistan, saved the lives of two fellow Americans and 18 Afghans. Today, while we honor his memory, we show our reverence, respect, and gratitude to every single man and woman in uniform who has worn a uniform before, now, or may in the future in defense of the freedoms and principles that we hold so dear. I want to thank everybody who has participated in making this video possible all the teams that came together to show our honor, our respect, and our reverence for all the men and women in uniform. And I wanted to thank everybody who at this moment in time is watching this video and thank you for your time and send a message from us, the American people, to the Ukrainian people who are suffering the most horrific attack on their homeland and let them know that we, as Americans, stand with them at this moment in time. In our history, we have given blood and treasure in defense of the principles of freedom, justice, democracy that they're fighting for as a unified nation. And unity is a very important thing that we should all look for in our daily lives. So we send this message of goodwill on United States Armed Forces Day and the 11th Gene Vance Jr. Day to all the Ukrainian people. You should know once again that we stand with you and may God bless you and keep you safe. And may God bless all our men and women in uniform and may God bless these United States of America. Thank you. If we look to the answer, as to why for so many years we achieved so much, prospered as no other people on earth, it was because here in this land, we unleashed the energy and individual genius of man to a greater extent than has ever been done before. Freedom and the dignity of the individual have been more available and assured here than in any other place on earth. The price for this freedom at times has been high, but we have never been unwilling to pay that price. Those who say that we're in a time when there are no heroes, they just don't know where to look. The sloping hills of Arlington National Cemetery with its row upon row of simple white markers, bearing crosses or stars of David, they add up to only a tiny fraction of the price that has been paid for our freedom. Each one of those markers is a monument to the kind of hero I spoke of earlier. We must realize that no arsenal or no weapon in the arsenals of the world is so formidable as the will and moral courage of free men and women. It is a weapon our adversaries in today's world do not have. It is a weapon that we as Americans do have. Let that be understood by those who practice terrorism and prey upon their neighbors. As for the enemies of freedom, those who are potential adversaries, they will be reminded that peace is the highest aspiration of the American people. We will negotiate for it, sacrifice for it, we will not surrender for it now or ever. We are Americans.